Before we get to the latest on the Cowboys, we are 207 subs away from 172K. That's an awesome figure. Let's make sure we get there before kickoff of the Cowboys-Panthers game. Hit that sub button for more free Cowboys videos right now. We have reached the point in the season where some notable names are getting cut. And as a reminder, all players who are released after the NFL trade deadline are subject to waivers. You can claim them if you so choose. Let's begin with Michael Carter, a name many of you had mentioned, at least some of you had mentioned, as maybe a trade candidate around the trade deadline. Now he's a full-on free agent, and there is a reason for it. Carter was very promising as a rookie, and I know that's what most of us are remembering because, eh, you know, we're not all watching a bunch of Gents games, right? Problem is, he has regressed as a third down back in particular this year, which leads some doubt as to whether or not it's a good idea for the Cowboys, as constructed, to pursue him. Back in 2021, his first season, his rookie year, Michael Carter, 147 carries, that's uh, 639 yards. He averaged 4.3 yards carry. Really good numbers for a first year back. Four scores, nine yards per catch as a, as a, as a third down back on, and pass catching. Wasn't very good as a blocker. Had a 42.7 PFF run grade, but hey, it was his first year. You think you get better as the career goes on, and it did not. 14 games played as a rookie. 25 games played since then. Two years. Look, there's been some extenuating circumstances, offensive line, quarterback play, et cetera, all which is worth mentioning here. The problem is every single number has gone the wrong way. Fewer carries in more games, fewer yards in more games. Now that makes sense, right, if you're having fewer carries. But the yards per carry has gone from 4.3 to 3.6. The pass catching, the receiving yards are up barely. The catches are up. But the yards per catch went from 9 to a rather putrid 6.4. And the pass protection is even worse. It is a 30 run blocking grade. I mean, that's, that, that's unplayable at that level. The Jets simply put release Michael Carter because they're going to keep using uh, Brees Hall. They're going to use Dalvin Cook. And my guy Israel Abanacanda is finally going to get some run in New York. Some more thoughts from me on this. But would you add Michael Carter? Why for yes and for no? Remember, you're kind of near the bottom in the waiver order. You never even got a chance at Jack Jones. Raiders snatched him up. Why for yes and for no in the comment section right now? It's the pinned comment, actually, on today's show. So if the ad comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. I think anytime a player that we've heard of gets released, it's worth having these conversations. So what the, what the Cowboys are going to do, they're going to discuss it. Now, I think what they're going to decide here is that Michael Carter was not very good as a third down back, and that's the role you'd want to play him in because you're not gonna, you're not gonna oh, take. You know, Pollard's better. He should be giving more run to Rico Dattel as it is anyway. So now your best case, RB three, but Hunter Lipke can block for you, and you drafted Deuce Vaughn and offers return value. It just doesn't do anything. Best case, you're arguing he's your fourth best back. I've got better players on the roster. We know how the Cowboys like to protect their draft picks as it is anyway. I think in the end, Mike Carter, he might get claimed. I think he'll be a better fit elsewhere. Now, in the event he doesn't get claimed and he wants to come join my practice squad, okay, I, I, will, never be, I will never complain about a practice squad addition. It's the practice squad. It's a freebie and gives you time to take a look at him through the course of the season and in the offseason potentially as well. I just I don't see the need to claim him. He's, you've got better options. He has not been very good. I, I think you're kind of banking on a return to form two years ago that, simply put, might not happen, and he probably wouldn't be active for a few weeks. Plus, you got to find a roster spot, and I need to make one for Rashawn Evans anyway. The math ain't mathin' for me on that front. Now, today's show is made possible by Game Time. Game Time is the place for last-minute tickets to your favorite sports or sporting event, music show, comedy, uh, theater, whatever. Game Time has you covered. My favorite part, of the Game Time app is it's not, it's not their killer last minute deals, which I also love. It's not that you can get twenty dollars off by using promo code Cowboys Chat C O W B O Y S C H A T. It's the 
not even the all-in prices. It's it's a very kind of nerdy thing, but I love that it's kind of like the, the live photo. You can actually see your seat. When you have the app, you can pick your seat and move it to left and right and get a real feel for where you're gonna sit in the actual game. I also love, second favorite part, and this is my favorite part, because I'm I'm, I like to save money, is their zone deals. Average of 18% savings simply by letting Game Time pick your seat. You pick the section, Game Time picks the seats for you. Who cares if you're in seat four or seat five? I certainly don't. So download the Game Time app, create your account, and use code CowboysChat for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but create your account and use code C O W B O Y S C H A T for $20 off your first purchase. The link, gametime.co, and the promo code will be in the section uh, or the comment section of today's video and the description as well. You knew I was going to put him on here. If only for the Cowboys legend uh, bit. We'll get to it at the end. Uh, the Dolphins have cut Kelvin Joseph. Uh, now, as I'm sure we all know, the Cowboys had traded Joseph for Noah Igbignogany before the season began. Simply put, Joseph had kind of run out of chances with this Cowboys team. But since then, you know, they, they've lost Trayvon Diggs to injury. They've lost C.J. Goodwin, a core special teamer, to injury as well. So would they have any interest whatsoever in bringing him back? The numbers for Kelvin Joseph, when you have more touchdowns allowed than pass breakups in your career, it's not a very good sign. The Cowboys had already kicked him inside uh, into the special teams role because they just, they just didn't trust him out there. They had concerns on that front in terms of him being a key part of the, of the team moving forward and, hey, can he hold up? And they, they, the minute they moved him to the inside was kind of a pretty big red flag of like, hmm, okay, maybe this isn't going to go the way it's supposed to go for Kelvin Joseph. And when that happened, it was like, all right, unless, unless Jordan Lewis isn't healthy, this might be a situation he's, it's just untenable moving forward. So Dolphins trade for him because they wanted an inside option. He played four games in Miami. He did not play very many snaps on defense. In fact, he was only targeted uh, two times in the four games that he played. He played 21 snaps on defense. So every 10 snaps he got targeted, that includes run snaps, he got beat every time. Two catches, 39 yards, and there's a reason why the Dolphins got halfway through and went, nope, we're done. So do you want to bring back Kelvin Joseph? I have more thoughts on this. Maybe you're over boss man fat. You might agree with me here. S for sign, P for pass in the comment section. First thing you must remember is you got to free up a roster spot, right? Well, it's not Deron Bland. It's not Stephon Gilmore. Jordan Lewis has been a bit nicked up, but he's going to be fine and be good to go. Deshaun Wright, the Cowboys already picked him over Jordan Lewis, or over Kelvin Joseph. They're not going to cut Eric Scott. and Maybe they can create an injury for Scott, which they might have to do for Deshaun, or for Rashawn Evans. And they already traded for Noah Benogany over Kelvin Joseph. So that's, where's the math there? Now, I've already seen some out there on, in Cowboys media and social media say, hey, Kelvin Joseph was good on special teams, which he was. He was good overall. He also had six penalties. Uh, and again, in general, when your second round picks can be famous, he can help you on teams. That's not a good thing. By the way, I kind of like the Sam Williams Gunner thing. I think that works. I, that's fun for me. I'm, I'm over boss man fat. I don't want it back anymore. Like it, it was, it was more trouble than, than the, 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 the juice was not worth the squeeze. You know, it, it, it was not worth it. He's a bust. You missed on another second round pick with your blue star special character guy. Didn't work back. Don't, didn't work out. I don't want him back. Let, it, let him go find another spot. See if he can have success elsewhere. It's never going to work in Dallas. I have no desire whatsoever to bring back boss man fat. All right, you should know the drill by now. It's the Cowboys legend bit. Any player who played for the Cowboys is a legend as long as they actually weren't that good because that's the Pete's purpose of the whole bit in the game. So name a Cowboys legend for me in the comment section right now. An interesting rumor, uh, idea maybe that has now been thrown out there by Andy Staples, now at On3, by the way. He said, well, maybe Dan Quinn is a Texas A&M head coach candidate, which is he really? 
Dan Quinn has spent two years coaching in college since 2000. It was two years as the Florida defensive coordinator, where he did have some success, make no mistake. But Dan Quinn's going to be a top head coach target again. And although I do think that a and job is going to be intriguing because money, uh, I, I really don't foresee Dan Quinn going, hmm, NFL head coaching job, maybe in Dallas or Aggies. That, that, I'm, not, I'm not buying that one. Here's what Andy Staples wrote. I have no inside info on this, but I've told every AD who has asked me about potential coaches that Quinn would make a spectacular head college head coach. His players love him. Side note, this feels like a way just to say you talk to athletic directors and talk about coach candidates. Anyway, that's obvious from what we see in the NFL. He has a personality that would make him a natural recruiter. He can shoot players straight with charm their parents. And in his brief time as Will Muschamp's defensive coordinator at Florida, Quinn identified and landed multiple future first-rounders. He probably doesn't want a college job because he's close to getting a second crack NFL head coach. But if you're a school of people kicking, taking big swings, and a and is, then it's worth an ask. It's not going to happen. You know, he's, he's going to stick with the NFL. This is slightly less delusional, I think, than the a and boosters who think they might be able to land Dan Campbell fr from the Lions because he went there. That also seems... Look, it's a and m We've seen some wild college moves, but Quinn ain't jumping to college football. He, ha he literally hasn't coached there in two decades. And he's, oh, he's going to jump back in? That seems highly unlikely. Now, it might end up being his last year in Dallas. But it's not going to be to jump down to Texas A&M. I would be blown away if that actually happened. And in general, when it's you lead with no inside info, but I like the guy, okay, that's probably a clear sign that maybe it's not that reliable from that perspective. So will Dan Quinn be in Dallas next year? One for yes, zero for no. Get your predictions in the comment section right now.